the University of Sao Paulo. I did my doctorate in Toronto, but I'm a postdoc in Sao Paulo. And this is a work that we've been doing with Jordi, who was for a year in, uh, in USP, we were sharing an office. And I proposed that who did uh, PG with Vladimir Pesta, that was here 12 months ago, um, in Ottawa, and now he's also a postdoc in Sao Paulo. So this was a very fruitful year, and um, I will introduce some motivation what we are interested in, and we are interested in this very strong version of fixed point properties. And uh, that's a definition of extremely amenable groups. And we will make a link with Rose theory that was made about 10 years ago, and since then there was a lot of uh, bloom in this research area. And we will say why we can use Ramsey's Ramsey theory of finding approximations. Uh, that's going to be because of homogeneity. And now we will look at examples that we were interested in. And these are going to be new examples in, in uh, the new settings that have been introduced. One is Guru space, which is a Banach space. And there we have a Ramsey or approximate Ramsey property for finite dimensional Banach spaces. And a little bit in a dual, one can see uh, the Poulsen simplex is a dual object to the Gurari space. There we need the approximate Ramsey property for finite dimensional simplices. And uh, we will also compute the universal minimal action of a group of affine homeomorphisms of the Poulsen simplex and look into the question, uh, the most important question in this area about the Hilbert cube. Let's start with the motivation, very known fact, which is actually more than than just this, but we will be interested in groups of homeomorphisms, so let's talk only about homeomorphisms. And a very easy fact is that every homeomorphism from the unit interval to itself has a fixed point. Right? There is always a, a point that is mapped to itself. But even more is true, if you look at only orientation preserving homeomorphisms of the unit interval, then the natural action of the homeomorphism group has a common fixed point, so that means there is going to be one point. I mean, this is in a way trivial, but because there will be the zero one. Uh, but it is a motivation for the definition that will come in the next step. And uh, what I mean by an action, just to make sure that we know uh, the definition. So action is going to be a continuous map from the product of a topological group with a compact house door space into the space such that the identity of the group acts as an identity and I will be using this notation instead of saying that this is a map pi that acts on e and x I will just use the, the multiplication notation and if you multiply two elements of the group this, this is like composition we can actually think of this as a continuous homomorphism from the group G into the group of homeomorphisms of the compact space x with a compact open topology So then we really see that identity is the identity homeomorphism and uh, when we look at multiplication, that is interpreted as composition. Yes. Yeah. Are you looking for homeomorphism, for zero orientation? Yes. yes. Yeah. Which is, in this case, is, is trivial, but this group has a property that if you replace the unit interval by any compact house door space, there will be a common fixed point. So, um, this is a very strong uh, fixed point property because that means that, well, whenever I look at any continuous homomorphism from the homeomorphism group of the unit interval into any other homeomorphism group of a compact house door space, then there will be a fixed point for all the homeomorphisms that are in the image of this mapping. Right? So, there will be one point that is fixed by all of them at the same time. And this is exactly the definition of an extremely amenable group that have been studied since this connection with the proof properties we made. So a topological group is extremely amenable if for every compact house door space and every action of group on it, uh, there is a common fixed point. And it was not obvious for a while whether such groups exist. First, uh, uh, Mitchell asked in 1970 whether such groups exist at all. Yes. Often it's, it's hard to prove that you have one fixed point for one map. Or there's uh, many problems of this sort and then you can have a couple of maps and then you're looking for a joint fixed point but that you would have 
uh, arbitrary space and arbitrary reaction and you would have a common fixed point. This was not very obvious. And the first construction was by Herr Christensen in 1975, who constructed exotic groups as an application of uh, their constructions of, uh, of uh, um, pseudo measures. They were trying to attack the Maharan problem and they had a partial solution, and uh, as an application of that, they found um, extremely amenable groups. But they called them exotic because they were thinking they are very strange. And it was not clear whether extremely amenable groups can be natural, some groups that we normally meet. And the first example was in 1983 that was very natural by Gromov and Milman, who uh, proved that uh, the, the group of unitaries of the Hilbert space is extremely amenable. This is something that many people care about, and uh, it turns out to have this property. And then the that was proved by the concentration of uh, measure phenomena. So the the first and second have completely different proofs or constructions. And then in 1998, Bestov showed that the group of automorphisms uh, of Q with its natural linear order, so order preserving maps from Q to itself, is extremely unusual. So, a very simple group. And uh, he did make the first link with the, with the Ramsey property. So extreme amenability, just to say, doesn't work very well with any operations, products, subgroups, or... One thing that has found quite some applications in uh, model theory and classifications of redux of structures is a lemma by Wojcicki and Skrensenko, which is easy to show, but actually a very powerful tool, is that open subgroups of extremely amenable groups uh, are extremely amenable. But when we are in... Uh, Examples also, come, there's lots of counterexamples by Beach's theorem, no locally compact group is extremely amenable. They are very far from that. So what people in topological dynamics usually were interested in studying, they are not uh, of interest for people who are interested in the extremely amenable groups. Okay, so what is Ramsey's theory? Um, let me start with them. If this is a part of finite combinatorics. Ramsey proved his uh, theorem as a lemma to classify binary relations, but then it turned out to be very interesting for, for combinatorics, for graphs, and there's a lot happening. But among the baby example of a Ramsey theorem is that if you have a, a group of six people and you draw an edge between two people if they mutually know each other, this is always a mutual relation in this case, then at the end of the day, you will either have three people that mutually know each other, or you have, will have three people that mutually do not know each other. So in this case, we have both of them, but it doesn't matter how many edges you put in there, you will always have at least one of these constellations. So this is very easy, and this is saying that uh, if we are coloring pairs of points, uh, in a six element set by two colors, then in the end we will find a three point set that has the same color, right? So here color is either know each other or don't know each other. And here the solution is nice that you know that for the constellation of uh, coloring edges and trying to find either a triangle or a non triangle, the solution is that you need only six people. But this, even if you go to larger numbers, not just edges but larger hyper edges, you get to very big numbers that we do not really know how they look like. So one thing that people do in combinatorics is trying to find bounds, how large they have to be and how small they need to be. So in general, if you have uh, two numbers, k and m, so k was 2 and m was 3, and uh, you have a number of colors, so here we have edges, non edges, two colors, there exists some large number n, in this case 6, such that for every coloring of k element subsets, of this large set with our many colors, there is a subset that is of the medium size, such that all small subsets of that uh, set have the same color. So whenever uh, you have a pattern and you go large enough, you will find that pattern, sort of Ramsey type statements. And now anything that is of this sort is called Ramsey theory. And we can also rephrase that for the purpose of, uh, of Pesce's theorem in finite linear orders. You can think of this as if you have two finite linear orders, right? because you can, for instance, think of these 
k element subsets that they are subsets of natural numbers and you can order them by uh, by an increase in size and this is one representation of the set right and you, you do not take them repeatedly so for every pair of uh, finite linear orders and a number of colors there exists a large finite linear order such as whenever you color all copies of the small one and the large one by are many colors there is a copy of the medium one such that all small ones inside have the same color and this is the core of the proof that the group of automorphisms of rational numbers is extremely unique. And this is because rational numbers, we can approximate them by finite linear orders. And this sort of being able to always find a pattern is what gives us the fixed point. And um, now we can go to arbitrary structures. You can have a class of finite structures of some first order language, and you say that this class satisfies a Ramsey property if whenever you have a small structure and a medium structure and a number of colors, then there exists a large structure such that no matter how you color the, the small structures inside of the large structure by two colors, I have two colors. Then there is always a copy of the medium structure, such that all the substructures that are isomorphic to the small one have the same color. So this is, in general, for arbitrary, uh, arbitrary class of structures. In um, in examples of Ramsey classes, finite structures or finite and finite subsets or finite linear orders, the same thing. <coughs> this is the original Ramsey theorem from 1932. And then in the 80s, Anisha Jill and Rödel started uh, the structural Ramsey theory, and they proved that finite linearly ordered graphs have the Ramsey property. And then uh, in 2005, Anisha Jill proved that finite linearly ordered metric spaces have the Ramsey property, because he was asked to do that to see whether um, we can also apply this connection between dynamics and then Ramsey. And then finite Boolean algebras, this is a very deep uh, theorem of Graham and Rothschild, we actually apply in Banach spaces uh, that, uh, that is very kind of Boolean algebra. And just notice, which will be important in, uh, in the next slides, is that these classes are classes of rigid structures. Right? So all, the only automorphism of each structure is, uh, is just the, uh, the identity, right? because they are linearly ordered. Finite Boolean algebras are not, and we will see how this uh, is important. And uh, as a result, or we will say the, the theorem uh, exactly, but here is the Ramsey classes and then the connecting uh, automorphism group. As we said, the Q can be approximated by finite linear orders, and the Ramsey property for finite linear orders gives us that the, the automorphism group of Q is extremely amenable. The same if you take the finite, uh, the, the countable random ordered graph, this can be approximated by finite uh, linear ordered graphs, and then you get the automorphism group on the limit is extremely amenable. Then the Nash tools result about finite metric spaces in your order tells us that the isometric group of the it's one of the proofs that the isometric group of the uh, Urizon space, but I don't see what it is, is extremely amenable. And then the last one, as I said, we didn't we had the Ramsey property for finite Boolean algebras, which uh, are approximations of the countable atomless Boolean algebra, which is a globus, uh, global algebra of the Cantor space. So here, this says something about automorphism group of the countable atomless Boolean algebra or the homeomorphism group of the Cantor space. But the class is not rigid. So it looks like this doesn't really go well to the fixed point. So we do have to put something to rigidify. So either we put some orders on the Boolean algebras, or if you look at it in a more natural setting, I would say topological setting, you add a chain of uh, closed subsets. So as a result, we get that the homeomorphism group of uh, the uh, Cantor set that is fixing some maximal chain of closed subsets is extremely important. I know this gets a little complex, but it is very natural when, uh, when you study it a bit more. So, one can see that these structures have resemblances, but they, they are a bit different, right? This is an automorphism group just for the countable structure. This one is a, is a separable, uh, complete metric space. And this one is a, is a, a zero-dimensional topological space. And what allows us to make this connection, why we can study 
uh, countable structures and they are groups of automorphisms by finite approximations and one is theorem that. So this is thanks to ultra homogeneity because all the structures that we look at, that they're called off and random structures, are ultra homogeneous. And what does that mean? Well, it means that whenever you have two substructures that look the same, that are finite or finitely generated, so there is a partial isomorphism or is an isomorphism between them, then you can extend that to a full automorphism of the structure. And that also means that you can study the group of automorphisms, let me just say how the topology is defined, well, with the, top, with the pointwise convergence, that means that, in a, a different language, that the stabilizers of finitely generated <coughs> structures form a basis of uh, Tobin uh, subgroups at the identity. So the topology is given by these guys, so that means that we have this connection between finitely generated substructures and basic open neighborhoods in the group. So this is the connection. And we do not mind that there, there is this restriction that to be able to study the dynamics we need ultra homogeneity because every group of automorphisms is a, an automorphism group of an ultra homogeneous structure. So we are actually studying all the automorphism group if we restrict ourselves to ultra homogeneous structures. And then if you go to Polish groups or basically whatever topological groups, then there is some model theoretic structure, maybe from continuous model theory, that, that is ultra homogeneous in some sense and the group is its automorphism group. So this is uh, always the case. And uh, the, the whole correspondence is that if you have a countable ultra homogeneous structure, then its group of automorphisms is extremely amenable if and only if family of uh, family of finitely generated substructure satisfies the Ramsey property and is rigid. So you need both to have the fixed point. You also need the rigidity, which I guess makes sense if you want to fix something. Well, if you have Ramsey property, then you can always put something in it to make it rigid, and then it will just get a subgroup that is very large in your automorphism group and uh, that is extremely amenable and that is actually also very important for the dynamics of the group. So KPT only, uh, KPT was Kipris West of Todorce, which a very important paper in 2005 that made this whole connection. As I said, Pastor first proved his result about the automorphism group of Q, but it was a singular result and here the general connection <coughs> was made and a lot of uh, uh, new results and young people are working in the area and uh, mostly proving Ramsey's theorems because this is all that is about. Uh, it always goes in this direction that you prove Ramsey's statement and then you show that the group is extremely amenable. The ideal setting would be that you would somehow be able to prove that, that your group is extremely amenable and from there you would do Ramsey. Yes. Anybody who is studying Ramsey knows that there is no unified proofs and to prove for every single little class that is Ramsey is a lot of work. If there is a unified approach, that's uh, exactly what we would like to see. And uh, we can go to other settings. So we had first countable structures where we need ultra homogeneity and we connected that to Ramsey. But we can also have approximately, um, approximately ultra homogeneous structures, which will be, for instance, the Gurari space where you will never have homogeneity if you uh, if you want to stay in the separable setting and there you need ra approximate Ramsey property again because the Ramsey property itself is not true. But once you have a structure where epsilons have something to say then it's natural to use them. And then you can go to projectively ultra homogeneous structures uh, where for instance you can think of continuum metric, one dimensional continuum. The unit interval can be represented in that way. The Cantor set as well or very important continuum the pseudo org. And there you get a dual Ramsey property, where Graham Rochelle is one of the examples. And if you throw in epsilons, mm -hmm. you can have approximately projected with ultra homogeneous structures and approximate dual Ramsey property. So, what I said about Kekris versus of Todorcevich, the same is true when you go to different settings. And there is Vyslav Kubic who is um, looking at this in a categorical setting, because obviously these things you can just represent with arrows. Uh, but you often need some specifics of the structure that you are working with. So it's good to have this big picture, but then you have to go into the details and work here. So as an example, uh, while we were having, for instance, the empty structure or the random graph, 
and they're bigger homogeneous with respect to embeddings or substructures, but embeddings will be more natural. Then uh, Gurari space, which we introduced uh, in, a, in a while, is something like the random ordered graph for finite, uh, finite graphs. The Gurari space is for uh, finite dimensional Banach spaces. Then one uh, <coughs> example of a projective homogeneous structure, or it can be represented as a quotient of that, is the Lalakva that we studied with Ola Kwiatkowska from UCLA. And there we were looking at homogeneity with respect to epimorphisms. And then uh, approximately projective homogeneous structure, Paulson simplex that appears all around. And then we are homogeneous with, with respect to fine epimorphisms. So even though you have this uh, very uh, categorical viewpoint, then you always have to see what are the what are the maps that you are looking at. So you would have the same structure, but that depends on what group you are studying. If you are studying group of homeomorphisms, then um, you will be looking either at embeddings or epimorphism. If you are looking at affine homeomorphisms, then you were looking also at affine approximation. So even on the same structure. It depends on what group you are looking at and then uh, different sorts of homogeneity in terms of property. So what is the Gurari space? It is a separable Banach space. Uh, it contains an isometric copy of every finite dimensional Banach space. So it is, um, as we say, universal for finite dimensional Banach spaces. And it is approximately ultra-homogeneous, which means that whenever we have a, an isometric embedding of a finite dimensional space into the, uh, into the Gurari space, then there exists some uh, linear isometry that almost extends this one. That means that we can make an error here with an epsilon. So for every epsilon, there will be one that is all there. And we cannot want uh, to have a space that is exactly as homogeneous because then it won't be separable. But if you are looking only at finite dimensional spaces, you would want their limit to be separable, not huge. We study also the huge things because then set theory comes in, so it's not that we don't do that. But this is something that appeared uh, in the 60s, and <coughs> you can only hope for the difference in ultra homogeneity. And uh, later, Luski showed that these conditions uniquely define the structure up to a linear isometry. So this is a unique object with these properties. And Kubitsch, uh, Solensky, Hansen, they provided a simple proof where they do actually uh, build this guy as as is what I say, limit by finite, these finite uh, dimensional finite spaces, and they are using this property uh, to be able to uh, construct this linear isometry. They are going down the epsilon in each step. Zigzag construction. And the group we are looking at is linear isometries. So you could, that's an example, you could also be only looking at the <coughs> linear bijections, but what we are interested in or linear isometry, so you are also preserving the norm. With a pointwise convergence topology, this gives you a Polish group. Again, I prefer looking at it as a, a, with a, a neighborhood basis around the identity. So if you have a finite dimensional but a space and you have an epsilon, then uh, an epsilon neighborhood given by the Z is all the linear isometries that move, um, uh, that move on that subspace only by epsilon. On the unit ball, right? And Ben Yakov proof, for instance, an interesting fact that this is a universal Polish group. This is a very recent result, and he used a cutted of light construction of that. It's, uh, um, I'll mention about the horizon space. Okay, so that also that's why it gained more attention. <coughs> and just reminding that the topology group is extremely amenable if you have uh, uh, one fixed point. And we were saying that in, in the discrete structures, this is exactly the Ramsey property. So what sort of Ramsey property we are looking at here? And it, it turns out that you can build uh, the Gurari space as a certain limit, or uh, this uh, increasing union, of the spaces of the type L infinity N, or N is in omega. And, and it's completion. So, this set is in a way large enough in there. Of course, this is not, uh, this depends on the mappings, right? So more, we have, an in, we have a, a direct spectrum of, this just means that this is L infinity supported on one 
one point, so this would be just uh, just singletons. And we have uh, some mappings. So, right? so this union means that this is respecting these embeddings in here, this isometric embedding. So this is not arbitrary, this is something that is in a way very random, contains every possible isometric embedding in a way, this sequence. So to be able to say something about the group of linear isometries and whether it's extremely amenable, it turns out that it is enough to show the Ramsey property for isometric embeddings between L infinity and C. Any questions? So we have two dimensions, D and M. So these are these are L infinity D and L infinity M. So these are just sequences that are supported on the first D natural numbers and are back natural. And we have number of colors and epsilon. Then there exists some large N such that whenever we color embeddings from the small L infinity into the larger one by Armand colors, then there exists some embedding of the medium one inside of this one and a color such that all the embeddings of the smaller one inside of the big one that factor through this embedding are almost monochromatic, meaning that within epsilon there is an embedding that has this color alpha. So, and this is again the best we can hope for because the exact statement where you would leave out the epsilon is not true. <coughs> and I guess that I'm sorry, I really I didn't sleep all night because I was uh, enjoying my stomach problems. Here I think we should say that this proves that the group of linear isometries of the Gerardi space is extremely amenable. But using, uh, well, how do we prove that? We use uh, graham rothschild theorem, which is, which can be viewed, it's also called a deal around the theorem, and it can be viewed as a really turning a rose in the, in the Ramsey theorem, in Ramsey theorem we were coloring subsets, so here we are coloring partitions. So we can also think of that in the, in the, the Ramsey theorem we had A, B and C and we were coloring mappings from A into C, right? And now we will have the same thing, but instead of that we will be coloring partitions of C into A. So we can think of that we are coloring uh, onto maps from C onto A, right? So we have the same setting, if we have a smaller set, a medium set, a number of colors, then there is a large set, such that whenever we color partitions of the large set into the small number of pieces, then there exists a partition of this large set into a larger number of pieces, such that all the coarsenings of that partition get the same color. So this is a very powerful statement that proves many other results in, in, uh, in Ramsey theory and um, we were lucky that it worked out here actually and the point is that L infinities are very combinatorial objects when you compose things you are still taking just maximums and in, in a way this makes it very nice for combinatorial purposes and uh, let me just say um, what we do sort of well if we have some k smaller and equal than m so we have this we have the solution this n then we are looking at partitions of the uh, of n many numbers into k many sets so all of partitions of this sort and we make a map from here one to one map into the embeddings of uh, l infinity k uh, into l infinity n and here we have this arbitrary coloring right when we have a Ramsey thing that means that we have some arbitrary coloring and we are trying to find something monochromatic. So we compose this coloring and then we get some coloring of, uh, of these partitions and we use the graham Rothschild to find some partition of n into n many pieces such that all the coarsenings have the same color and then we have to show that uh, when we have the same type of mapping inside of here It's very easy to define, but too many details. And then uh, you look at what sort of map it gives you here. Then when you look at all the embeddings from, uh, from, so there will be some solution to this Ramsey problem in here, right? So there will be some partition Q 
to that you assign some embedding i and then you have to show that if you look at all the embeddings of the small into the medium and then you compose in i then you end in the image of these partitions right because what you do you have a coloring of the whole thing in here the trick is that you reduce to a subspace of these of these embeddings you are not dealing with all of them you are dealing only with the ones that are in the image, right? That's how you transfer the coloring in here. And then, well, if you are lucky, the solution that you get from this problem, this Ramsey problem, will give you also a solution to this problem. But if you had things that this composition wouldn't be in the image, you would have no control. You only control things that, uh, that come from the coloring that is already given by the inclusion. And this is a very standard thing in Ramsey theory. You're looking for what are the problems that happen, what are the bad colors, what embeddings, uh, uh, if you have them at the same time, cannot, uh, you, you will always distinguish them from each other, and you're sort of trying to find the position of your space inside, so that inside of that position, you will not have these two constellations. So you go to some smaller subspace, where you know that you can avoid these bad things. So, I don't know if uh, this, this makes sense, but this is very, very common, that you, you only work with some sort of objects, but in the end you showed that this was okay. And uh, Shelah was the first one who started this sort of method, and uh, that's what we do. We always look for bad colorings and ways to avoid them. And then we can use some uh, Banach, Banach theoretic methods, hiding things in epsilons, to go from L infinity ends into all uh, finite dimensional Banach spaces. And we are not only looking at um, isometric embeddings, we can also be looking at almost isometric embeddings. Mm -hmm. So an isometric embedding would be here if theta is equal to 1, but we can also make errors. So this makes the theorem stronger, but everything is about hiding embedding. So if you have two finite dimensional spaces, such that one uh, can be embedded into the other, and you have a number of colors and an epsilon, then there exists some large um, finite dimensional Banach space, such that whenever you color, again, the almost embeddings with theta here uh, by our many colors, then you can find some embedding where you, uh, the compositions are almost monochromatic. So, of course, from here you also have that the group of linear isometries is extremely amenable, but anything that builds, that is a building block for the uh, for the Gurari space, uh, any class of that sort, if it has a Ramsey property, is sufficient. Any questions? So this is just, just to, to say how good we are. This is the first uh, application of uh, the Ramsey theory into topological dynamics um, with uh, approximately ultra-homogeneous structures. It's sort of the next thing to do. And there was a paper first written up about this connection, but they didn't know whether they should publish it because there was no example. So it's nice when a theory works, but if you can't apply it, uh, then it's a bit sad. So we also can uh, apply these ban uh, these, these ban spaces results to give you a new proof of the extreme amenability of the group of isometries of the Eurozone space. So the Eurozone space is a complete separable of isometric space, and it contains an isometric copy of every finite metric space. So it is universal for finite metric spaces, and uh, every isometric between two finite subspaces can be extended to an isometric of the whole space. So it is homogeneous with respect to finite spaces. And uh, we can show that finite metric spaces satisfy the approximate Ramsey property. This space is, in a sense, nicely behaved because it is exactly of homogeneous. So you can still use the, the exact Ramsey property, but with linear orders, or if you want to get rid of linear orders, you have to employ epsilons. For a very simple reason, because when, once you have embeddings, you can embed things uh, that will look the same, but just switch things around, and then you cannot have Ramsey. And as a colorado pestos result, uh, that the group of uh, isometries of the Eurozone space is extremely amenable. So this was also one of the first results about extreme amenability, and he proved that with the, by the concentration of measured phenomena, so uh, another powerful tool uh, in extreme amenability with tight connections to Ramsey theory. And he did make this link. He knew that this group is extremely amenable if and only if the finite metric spaces satisfy the approximate Ramsey property. So this is not new because you can prove this, and from there this follows. 
But what we did was that we have a direct proof using biospaces of the other universal property, which is, as Steve always says, what people actually care about. And the Paulson symbolizes, in a way, a dualization. So instead of uh, finite dimensional binary spaces, you have finite dimensional simplices. Actually, more is true every matrix of the simplex is inside as a phase. And whenever you have two phases of the same finite dimension, then there is a, a, a fine homeomorphism of P that uh, maps one to the other. So this is ultra homogeneous for finite simplices. And Lindenstrauss, also in Sturfeld, proved that this again. Um, defines the Poisson simplex uh, uniquely. And why Poisson built the simplex? To show that there is a simplex in which extreme points are dense. So this is very contradictory to find an original simplex where well, you have a triangle, the three points are nowhere close to being dense, and then, so this was his reason. And where does it, for instance, appear? If you take look at the Bernoulli shift, the left shift, of uh, sequences in Z, then all T invariant probability variable measures form this simplex. So always, uh, if you have some mapping uh, and then you look at T invariant probability measures, this is always a simplex. Well, it can also not contain any point. And uh, in general, if, if the group does not have the Kajan property, then it's always P. So it appears very often in your body. And there, then the extreme points are the body. And to be able to grab the, the, uh, the Poisson simplex with the Ramsey property, we did represent it as an inverse limit. Because it can also look at the injective limit, but we didn't see the Ramsey property there. So we look at, uh, instead of um, direct limit and completion, inverse limit. And we can build it from finitely dimensional simplices. Every finite dimensional simplex is a finite homeomorphic to the one that looks very nice, right? That looks like a triangle, a tetrahedron, which you can think of this is a, the, the positive part of the unit wall in the L1N. And we are looking at all epimorphisms from a larger dimensional to a smaller one, which means continuous affine subjections. And in the end, what we want to study, what this approximates, is the group of all the fine homeomorphisms of the Poisson simplex with the compact open topology. And uh, we now characterize in a similar way, instead of in a direct way, in a projective way, that every for every finite dimensional simplex there is a continuous fine surjection. Actually, it's even true that if you put any compact prize of the simplex in there, and uh, there's this uh, approximate projective ultra homogeneity, which means that uh, if you have two uh, two projections onto a finite dimensional simplex, then you can bring one close to the other. And uh, these two properties characterize the Poisson simplex among all non trivial matrices of simplices. So um, this already looks like our setting. We are universal for all simplices and we are almost homogeneous. However, we do not have uh, the Ramsey property for just simplices with the fine subjections. It's not true. You can move the uh, extreme points, you can just rotate them, and then you do not have Ramsey because then you have two same images that uh, are represented by two different maps. So we have to fix one of these extreme points, and then we are good. So we are looking at continuous affine surjections preserving some extreme point, and then we get again the Ramsey property just with the arrows uh, reversed. So it's in a way, this would be for the Gurari space when you have finite dimensional body spaces and you have injections. And here you would have the finite dimensional simplices and you are, you are looking at the projections here, um, keeping the point at, at non moved. And uh, then the group that, that this sub says something about is the group of the finite homeomorphisms of the Poisson simplex fixing some extreme point, whichever it is, because we can move one to the other. And uh, the Ramsey property shows that this group is extremely amenable. We would like to know something about the whole group of fine homeomorphisms, and that is the computation of the universal minimal action, which minimal action is such an action that there is no smaller one, so there is no closed uh, invariant subset. <coughs> and the universal minimal action is the largest one among these, so it is an action such that whenever you have any other minimal action, then there exists a surjective homomorphism, and there is a continuous surjection from one to the other respecting the actions. 
And um, a lemma by Ellis, easy but not saying at all how they look like, is that the universal minimal action exists for every topological group and it's unique up to an, up to an isomorphism. So this um, mm, extremely amenable groups and Kekri specific torture which correspondent actually opened uh, possibilities to compute to say how these look like. Sometimes they are very wild, but sometimes they have a very nice representation, which from the abstract nonsense is not to be seen, but we don't have time to talk about it. But it is, uh, uh, it, is uh, it started in their paper, and uh, it's a beautiful theory. And this looks a little terrible, but it's, uh, it says that the universal minimal flow of the group of uh, fine homeomorphisms of the Poulsen simplex is the natural action of the Poulsen simplex itself. So, very nice representation, and um, this is the representation from the pieces of So, um, this is one of, the, one of the successes, that means it is metrizable, which is also what we are interested in. People are interested in metrizable actions, but for instance, for the discrete groups or locally compared groups, these minimal actions are always huge, you know, these minimal actions. So, um, this is what we study. There is, uh, there is conjectures between metrizability of universal minimal flows and realms of theory which have applications and hopefully will soon be true. And um, a big problem in this theory, just to link what, what is, um, I would say, one of the major problems and it's easy to, uh, to explain is, um, is what is the universal minimal action of the group of homeomorphisms of the Hilbert key. So this has been open for quite a while and nobody knows whether you can attack it by the finite approximations and the Ramsey theory or you can do something else what is the right thing so maybe something new will appear, maybe not one thing we can say is that it has some extremely amenable subgroups or it has some um, it has some groups that we can put our hands up just because Q, the Hilbert Q as a topological space is homeomorphic to any compact metrizable simplex. So maybe it has something to do with, uh, with convex structures. Something to say. So for instance, we know that uh, the group of homeomorphisms of cube has a closed subgroup which, whose universal minimal flow is the natural action on itself, which is because it is the same as P. So the group of affine homeomorphisms of P is a closed subgroup in there. Um, needless to say that we know that the universal minimal action of the group of homeomorphisms is not the natural action of Q, because by result of Luspinski, the action cannot be three transitive, and this is n transitive for any n. Any n two n tuples can be moved from one to the other by a homeomorphism. And uh, we have also the result about Q with its natural structure, right? It's a Q, so you think that the extreme points are really good. The, the points that have only coordinates um, 1 or minus 1. And uh, there we show that the group of uh, automorphisms of Q with its natural convex structures is isomorphic to the compact group 2 to n times the uh, group of all permutations of natural numbers. So at first it looked like there's just going to be too many of them, but it is a very simple group. And there the universal minimum flow is 2 to n being compact, it stays there for some reasons and then uh, product with the linear orders of n, which is the universal minimal flow of the group of all permutations. So, um, but who knows? Jordi is positive about the view that maybe uh, the universal minimal action should be all complex structures in some sense, which doesn't make sense yet. Maybe this would be a different approach to the problem. And I guess 